hello and welcome to Clarissa K Explains It All, where we use this opportunity to share some time with each other and talk about the hot topics surrounding our collective consciousness. Hello and welcome, I'm Clarissa and thank you for joining me in this space where we get the opportunity to share some time with each other and today I have a wonderful guest, Jane Cedric. Jane, would you like to say hello? Yeah, hi there Clarissa, thanks for having me. (laughs) Jane, tell us more about yourself. (laughs) Okay, so I'm Jane Cedric, I'm based in Brampton in the north of Cumbria and I am a bespoke travel consultant, part of the Travel Counselor Franchise Network. Um, So I offer leisure and business travel to those who need a little help with navigating through this very complex travel landscape right now. And I think it's so relevant right now because <laughs> this is the time where we're all thinking we would, t- you know, tender hooks wanting to leave the country just so we can have a little bit of a different experience. So, how are you finding this transition from the 2020 to 21? We're in the travel side of things. I think, to be honest, Clarissa, it's been difficult all the way through, right from when the pandemic started, and we, I, I've had to experience different phases of. You know, initially when it started, I had clients overseas. So there was the stress and the panic of getting them back before all the borders closed down. Then there was the period of no travel. Then there was that tentative opening up of borders kind of last summer. So I got people away and then it all started closing down again. And then, of course, 2021 hit and we had no travel for five months five months and uh, in that time because I do business travel I was able to get a couple of travelers away for essential travel purposes because travel outside of that reason was prohibited by our government Uh, but from the 17th of May overseas travel has been allowed but of course the we've got the traffic light system we've got the changing entry requirements um so yeah it's 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 all very complicated still travel is not the easy thing it once was no, it definitely is manoeuvring in at different levels and you just never know from day to day what is going on. So being in touch with someone like you who, can, who has the update information yeah. is just wise. So Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have no idea what's going on from here to there. So it's really great to, to speak with you. So Jane, let's get into the beginning. How did you get into the travel industry? Oh, wow. It's, it, I, I just kind of fell into it because I didn't really know what else to do. Mm-hmm. I have a language degree in German and French, which I got from Bristol Polytechnic many years ago. And at the time, I knew I wanted to use my languages in whatever job I ended up doing. But I also wanted to travel overseas as part of my job. And um, the interviews that I had for things like export marketing roles didn't come to anything so I took I took stock and ended up um, becoming a ski rep for a season in the French Alps uh, because I could ski I could speak the language I thought okay let's do this for, for, for just a winter season then I'll come back and I'll get a proper job after that and some 32 years later <laughs> I still haven't got that proper job, but I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. Yeah. Well, um, this is your proper job now, isn't it? So. Yeah, this is my proper job. <laughs> it's my business now. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, you, um, do you say you work for the Travel Council? So what does that mean then? So the Travel Counselor Network is a franchise operation. So if we take that outside of the travel equation, it could be something like uh, McDonald's. So that's a franchise set up. So, so with Travel Counselors, I own my business, but I've got the support of head office of our support team if I need it. You know, if things get so complicated, I can't deal with it on my own. Then I've got the backup team. Uh, if needs be and to be honest they've been absolutely fantastic all the way through this Uh, so uh, you know we couldn't have really done it without them. Yeah because you've got the the support system there they also you know help to maintain a standard as well of of what you want in especially becoming being a bespoke. Yeah. So um, what do you think your drive is now because you had this period of 2020 and that could have shaken you mean shaken the, your whole world so it was how, how do you keep yourself motivated and driven through that time what drives I think, you? I think for me it was just a case of 
keep in front of mind with my clients and potential clients at all times. I was I was one of the lucky people in the industry in that because my husband had a, a, and has a, a really good financial job, I knew that I wasn't going to have the financial difficulties that meant I would have had to go and get another job or another two jobs, which I know a lot of people in this sector have had to do just to make ends meet. So I, re- I recognise I was, I was lucky in that respect. So I was trying to think of, any way possible that I could actually stay out there, stay front of mind. And one of those things that I did was to introduce my travel from home Zoom sessions that I did from June 2020 through to May earlier this year, where every two or three weeks I would invite one of my, we call them uh, ground agents, ground handlers, destination specialists. So, for example, South Africa, I would get somebody on from our South African agent to actually then give my clients some kind of inspiration for for travel for future Uh, and I did that through to June this year so I would send an invite out to my clients and then they would kind of book onto the call so I would have between 10 20 people on those sessions and it was just a good way of, of keeping in touch I've also been quite consistent with my social media presence as well on LinkedIn and Facebook, Instagram, in the kind of advice that I've been giving to people right throughout this process. Mm. Uh, But I think the drive was that I needed my business still to be here when we start to come out of this, which we are doing now. And I needed to be ready for when the big bounce back happens. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that is coming in your your life, you know, and surrounding your business, because although you're secure, there must have been some worries um, that you were going through, just like uh, just like anybody else. But what do you think was the worries that you overcame? Yeah, I think I think for me, it was the not knowing when this all was going to end and when we could get some kind of light at the end of the tunnel. And and bearing in mind that in the travel industry, particularly being self employed. I only get money coming into my account when I actually have clients traveling. So although I've been working right throughout this period, I've only last week had my first income into my account Mm. since March. So that's a period of five or six months without any pay whatsoever. And I've still got outgoings. Um, So I've been seeing my my savings kind of dwindle over the past 12 to 18 months um so the fact that I've now got money coming back in again is the most amazing feeling and that that was that was giving me some concern because obviously as as a a woman in my 50s I've always been used to earning a salary before I became self-employed I knew when I took the jump to become self-employed that yeah there would be some good some bad months but on balance it would even out across the 12 month period never foreseeing that we would have this pandemic come and hit us in the face big style yeah yeah and, and I think that in itself it did cause lack of sleep at night just the ongoing constant changes to government requirements and the traffic light system it was a period of and still is a period of I need to know that I am giving the best advice possible to my clients and that puts a whole lot of different stress on the situation because if I get that advice wrong and my clients go and and book or they do something on my advice that might be incorrect then that that has caused me some anxiety along the way as well and and do you think then the the role of, of, of travel agents is changing them because they're having to be almost like a, a support system. Yeah, absolutely. Them. And I think I think people who are trying to book things on a DIY program right now, where they're maybe just trawling the internet and booking things and not really aware that A, the traffic light system doesn't align with the entry requirements for that particular destination um, it's things like that that could completely catch them unawares and then they'll they'll come unstuck and I think the role of somebody like myself is going to be key moving forward particularly mm-hmm. as we maneuver our way through this this changing landscape that is I think I think you're right because I've tried to book um, you know recently and it is a complete nightmare <laughs> so it's it's just because not having all the information and you've got to go and uh, research the information, go on the uh, you know web, uh, government website, mm-hmm. and things change. So you don't know which version you're looking at. If you look at updated versions. So yes, definitely. I feel like, um, 
you know, this, the travel industry is changing. And then, you know, there is the, the concern about the environmental changes as well. So what is your, your point of view on that? Can you see how the travel um, industry is having to um, in, go in line with environmental changes as well? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing the pandemic has showed us is that uh, the world had become an over-travelled place. There is definitely a, a need for changing the way that people travel coming out of this. Uh, I think we need to be more mindful of, you know, taking trips a bit more slowly, going to maybe one destination and spending time in that destination so that you're not kind of constantly moving on here and there and taking loads of internal flights wherever that destination is but actually spending time and giving something back to that community that you are going to as a tourist uh, whether that be through you know visiting local community groups who are doing some kind of conservation work mm -hmm. or whether it be by just you know taking the train a bit more than flying or cutting down maybe those those overseas visits and, and even though I say that from a, a travel consultant perspective when I am at a place where I can be a bit more selective about the kind of business that I put forward rather than just trying to survive and come out of this pandemic I want to make sure that I'm offering a more sustainable travel business as well yeah more conscientious about yeah, it. yeah. I completely agree definitely the conscientious approaches is, is rising which is really really good mm. so what do you what would you say your biggest lesson out of 2020 was then I think really <laughs> it's just to appreciate the small things mm. and and just not to take anything for granted anymore we were all so used to just getting on a plane because we could and because it was available to us. And now, because people are having to think about the cost of the PCR tests and whether they need to quarantine when they come back or not, you know, it does make people think a lot more about, you know, how essential is this trip? And yeah, on the flip side, holidays are essential because they're essential for well-being. Also, for that reason, I stated just before in that, you know, if you're going to give something back to the local community to make sure that the tourist pound or the tourist dollar you know doesn't go to some mus massive multinational company but it actually goes to the to the people on the ground who are actually there looking after you as well yeah yeah definitely definitely local food and yeah yeah <laughs> so um let's talk about what you actually offer as a solution so because you've got so many things going on and we've got this changing environment so if somebody was to come to you uh, and they and they wanted to use your some of your service could you just walk through what they what you would off, be offering yeah so it really depends what that person wants uh right at the outset I would have a conversation uh it could be just flights and a hire car as I had a call this morning family want to go and visit their, their their son who lives in Denmark it could be a really complex bespoke itinerary a trip of a lifetime so I'm going to have a conversation with my clients right from the outset just to find out exactly what it is that they're wanting from that trip and then I find out their interests. I find, find out the kind of travel that they've done before, the kind of accommodation they like staying in. Uh, and then I will piece it all together. Now, it might be that I piece that together using one of our overseas ground agents and, and we piece it together because once I've got uh, the dealings with that ground agent overseas, I know that my clients, when they go to that destination, they are going to be well looked after. And there's also somebody on the ground if there's a situation that we need we need to kind of resolve, which given the given the state of play as it has been, you know, it's 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 important to know that you know my clients have got 24-7 assistance if need be, which is what I also give my clients as well. Also, if somebody comes to me and says, All right, I just want to go and lie on a beach for a week, yeah, I can do that kind of holiday as well. And invariably I could either use our own resorts where we have direct contracts with accommodation or it might be that the best solution for that client is something like uh, a holiday that's done through a third party so in that case I would be a travel agent rather than a, a kind of a bespoke travel consultant so that's that's on the leisure side I also offer business travel as well so anybody who is looking to go from A to B 
for their business, for their work, and they can't be bothered trying to find the best airfares or the car hire or the place that they need to stay at because they're too busy what they need to be doing, then I basically act as a kind of an extension to their business by arranging all their travel the whole inclusions of everything to make their business travel successful and so they can focus on what they need to do when they're out there I take care of everything else so that's great so you almost also have like a a PA position in when it relates to business yeah yeah and an advisory when it relates to a normal person yeah you can also just do small trips getaway trips to luxury trips to business trips absolutely amazing what would be your next destination do you think well, I've <laughs> my my kind of uh, holiday is not not what everybody would class as a holiday. I like to be active when I'm on my holidays. So and and because I always go away with my husband, um, he doesn't like to kind of lie by a pool or do anything that involves sitting down for more than about thirty minutes at a time. <laughs> so it always has to be active. So we are actually taking two weeks away from uh, the desk. And we're going to be hiking the Pennine Way, the northern two thirds of it. So we did the first stretch back in May, uh, but we're doing it raising money for a charity down in Derbyshire. So uh, what charity? It's a charity called Rubens Retreat. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a charity that was created after the death of little Ruben, who was 23 months old. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's a facility that gives families, particularly parents, the possibility and opportunity to get counselling from a family who've gone through it themselves, uh, but also for families that have got children with life limiting illnesses who can go and have some together time and family time. So that's what we're raising money for doing our Pennine Way hike. That's yeah. really, really good. Oh, wow. Bless you. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So is, is it so it's a kind of a holiday, but it's, you know, it's, a it's well, it's a holiday in the fact it will be away from my desk and <laughs> I'll actually have another travel council covering my business. <laughs> okay. um, but um, yeah, my, my ideal holiday, I think, is something where I get to do a bit of activity, but also I get some downtime as well because I don't get much downtime when I'm uh, when I'm in front of my laptop and particularly you know the last few months has been pretty full on so yeah I'm ready for a bit of me time as well yeah definitely so how long have you been married with your to your husband uh we're coming up to 10 years wow 10 years in October we've been together 13 oh that is amazing yeah so there's hope (laughs) (laughs) there is hope (laughs) that's really good so that's really amazing I'm going to just thank you again for sharing your insights is there any kind of words of wisdom that you could offer at the moment regarding maybe starting up your own travel um, business yeah I think whatever situation you find yourself in Uh, whether it's setting up a travel business or setting up any kind of business you know you've just got to keep yourself in mind that there is light at the end of the tunnel however tough things might get sometimes we have bad days we have good days I had a bad day last week and I was thinking oh but at the end of the day you know that you get up the next day and something good's going to happen and just keep your mind focused on that but you know if something if you think that you're going to get overawed by everything that's going on and you've got too many balls to juggle at the same time then just take little steps you know you don't have to achieve everything at the, at the same time you know get those small things ticked off your list so even just by ticking something off your list every day you can get through it and, and you'll come through the other side but just stick in there and, and and know that you know being being in the travel industry we are a very resilient bunch of people and it will become good again I love that I love that so much that's like <laughs> such good good um, words of wisdom and it relates to any entrepreneurial mindset so that's really good so how can we contact you (laughs) okay you can find me on facebook uh just uh just search for jane sedgwick dash travel counselor uh i'm on instagram at jane sedgwick travel yeah that's right at jane sedgwick travel um i'm on linkedin jane sedgwick um 
do you want my phone number as well or email or <laughs> I'll put all the details in the link below so um people can also connect with you there and use your services find out also about the things that you offer you've got so much knowledge on the amber system that's going on at the moment so um you can get all the information on that and lastly do you when do you think when do you think there could be an end to this travel system or do you think they should end it or do you think there should be a tweak in it or some sort I definitely sense there is a shift going on at the moment there is more feeling of positivity out there I think as people travel themselves and start putting their posts of their family pictures on social media and their friends and contacts see all of that I think that's when that's when things start to happen and, and, and I, I know for myself that my inquiries have really started to pick up in the last few weeks because of that I think we are probably stuck with the you know the changing requirements as we come through this pandemic and up until a point where you know, sufficient people have been vaccinated across the world because there are certain destinations in the world which are still a no-go, you know, like the Australias, New Zealand, most of Southern Africa. But there are more and more destinations that are opening up to us. But again, it's that, it's that you know, be mindful of how we travel in the yeah. future. You know, we only have one planet. Let's not spoil it. This is it. This is so true. Well, thank you again, Jane. And if you love that connection, please share in the places where you care. And until next time, take care. Bye.